from the word and for praying for me thank you for the many brothers who kept in touch with me this week and have kept me in prayer and for few of you who tap me on the shoulder even now uh, to encourage me and as we look to the word you know we're continuing the series on acts of christ and the apostles right and now we are uh, looking at you know the infancy narrative and the infancy narrative is about the forerunner and the fulfillment the fulfillment in capital f which is our lord jesus christ who will have equal standing with god and god the father right so just a quick recap before we come to the passage for this morning and um, we are looking we we saw a couple of weeks back uh, agent the angel gabriel gave the announcement to zachariah right that the son his son who is john the baptist would be born and he would be the forerunner for christ and what did zachariah do he did not believe that right he was then rebuked and struck down and he was made mute elizabeth who is over 60 years old barren advanced in age has then conceived and she will bring forth john the baptist into the world and last week we saw the announcement to mary a young girl and she wondered how this would happen so let's look at a quick background of uh, mary before we go ahead and you know mary was a young girl she's definitely less than 16 years old not more than 16 and you know unmarried betrothed to joseph from the tribe of juda the line of king david lot of prophecies to be fulfilled through that you know christ being the eternal king from the line of david and mary a virgin would miraculously conceive when the holy spirit would overshadow her we see that in luke 135 the first part of it and you know this is also a fulfillment to a prophecy in isaiah 714 where it says therefore the lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name emmanuel god with us you know mary shows immense faith in all her responses in verse 34 in 38 in verse 45 in all of it you can see faith coming out you know you may say in verse 38 she she actually kind of questions you know but we saw that last week that it is just a practical question how can this be how can this be because i have not known her man and you know see you see the difference there when the angel gabriel doesn't rebuke her but instead takes his time to answer her and give her uh, how she would come with child and you know this um this is even confirmed in verse 45 where which we'll read where blessed is she who believed what was told to her from the lord you know mary will go on to carry the lord jesus christ himself she will bring forth a son the savior to the world god fulfilled multiple promises even in this that she that our lord jesus christ would be born of a woman in genesis 3:15 it says and i put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed the woman's seed our lord jesus christ would be born of a woman and what will he do he will bruise your head he will bruise the head of the serpent in galatians 4:4 it says when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born of a woman you know jesus christ is born of mary he is divine he is the son of god and he is god incarnate in the flesh and this is our theme going forward in the weeks to come and you know in the next couple of verses that's in 36 and 37 we see great encouragement coming from gabriel agent gab the angel gabriel says that your relative elizabeth is also with child and she was barren and she has conceived i'm sure that also would have shocked her and she would would have been pleased to hear that and in the next verse in verse 37 it says with god nothing is possible with god nothing is possible Im- nothing is impossible i'm sorry nothing is impossible and what is her answer right she is a young girl uncertain of the future uncertain of what's going to happen 
and you know if any one of us could put ourselves in there it's social disgrace right we saw that last week it's going to be humiliation public embarrassment and in those days it could also mean stoning to death that was the punishment a difficult life for forward right possibly joseph would would divorce her in spite of all that what is her response in verse 38 she says behold the maid servant of the lord let it be to me according to your word she is in complete submission unto the lord and submits unto the will of the father and before we move forward to the passage uh, today you know let's take a look at a few quick events which jonathan has already read but you know just to touch on it uh, just help us understand where is mary now and you know immediately in verse 13 and as she makes this declaration it says now mary arose it was immediate she arose and went to the hill country to who to zacharias's house and greeted elizabeth that's in verse 40 and in 41 the babe in her leaped in the womb and now it's it's a very very important phrase here which is elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit elizabeth now being filled with the holy spirit is now going to speak out not normally but with a loud voice firm authoritative from the holy spirit so let's look at verse 42 <clears throat> and here it says blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb the same words which gabriel had told to mary the highest honor and here we see elizabeth confirming her the highest honor among mothers to serve as the mother of the messiah mary is receiving a blessing here mary herself would not be the blessing to others neither does the word anywhere say that mary would be divine or revered we will look at that little more in the in the verses to come and hear from her mary herself on what she has to say and in verse 43 elizabeth goes on to say why is this granted to me you know elizabeth here is humbling herself that the mother of my lord that's the critical word here of my lord the child is the focus here not the mother the child is the focus here and this child is the god of creation this child is god of their salvation this child is the lord and savior the messiah who they have been praying for and they have understood that the messiah is going to come in verse 31 luke 131 we read to be named jesus yeshua the lord is salvation the salvation who whom they were waiting for is going to come and in, in luke 144 elizabeth did not have to tell her this but she tells her that the babe in her that is john the baptist leaps with joy and now now we should always you know go back a bit and in luke 115 if you remember we read that this baby would be filled with the holy spirit right from the womb what is the purpose for that this was one of the purposes right when mary entered the room this babe who was already filled with the holy spirit leaps with joy confirming to mary various things and in verse 45 we see her giving her another comfort she says blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which was told to her from the lord blessed is she you know here we see mary going to a godly person she goes to a person who is going through a similar situation she goes to elizabeth and gets comfort and confirmation on various levels she's not looking for signs right but she's gone to a person who has told her from her life experience we we too can go to godly people right ask for confirmation we can look to the word of god and get strength from the word of god we can get advice from the right places if we look for it in the right place so now we we'll, let me just help you understand the mindset of mary before we look at at the critical verses to come which is verse 46 onwards and we see here that the holy spirit has been speaking to elizabeth speaking to mary through elizabeth right and confirms many things which will unfold through mary's unborn child mary here herself is just a child and it's clear that it's clear to her that various remarkable things are going to happen through her through her son and she also knows that human history is going to change drastically through this child and why do i say this because of the verses we are going to read 
you know mary enjoyed scripture she knew scripture this passage to come has more than 15 references from the old testament it's filled with scripture and prayer you know the greatest songs we sing of praise and worship are using scripture itself how beautiful is that right when we use scripture itself not human words but scripture itself and you know one more thing is that mary's song which we're going to read is similar to hannah's song that is in 1st samuel 2 1 to 10 where prophet samuel is also miraculously born and is going to be given into the lord's service i'll just read a few verses from 1st samuel 2 1 and 2 and hannah hannah prayed and said my heart rejoices in the lord my horn is exalted in the lord i rejoice in your salvation no one is holy like the lord there is no one besides you nor is there a rock like our god so these are key uh, words which i think we can just remember which is rejoices exalted uh, your salvation holy like the lord none beside you rock like our god and you know as uh, we we see this see here um, the last verse in 45 say you know is a praise of uh, mary you know say blessed are you right and you know she could be uh, you know she could either be inflated and say oh i am going to be the mother of a king i'm like a queen now or she could take a different path you know she could get totally uh, stressed out by this and choose an exit plan i i'm not ready for all this right but what did she choose in verse 46 it starts with the word and the reason it starts with the word and is it says as a result of all of this mary comes to a point and she says my soul magnifies the lord amazing right i don't think i would have such a response when i was put in such a situation my soul magnifies the lord magnifies she wants to put focus back on the lord it's not her she wants to put focus back on the lord and what is it to put focus to look at the intricate details when you put focus on something what are you doing you're looking at the intricate details of that person how do we magnify god we can rejoice him as god our creator as god our provider as god as the righteous judge and even god our savior you know in her case it's like in spite of all these things i will magnify the lord as though as i'm going to go through these difficult days my soul magnifies the god in habakkuk 3:18 you know uh, the prophet goes through a similar situation where he is representing the faithful israelites who are going through a a current affliction and who will be put to judgment but what does he look forward to he is looking forward to the future salvation which he knows is definite similarly mary also shows immense spiritual maturity for a young girl immense spiritual maturity she understands the situation which she has been given is from the lord and she magnifies the lord she puts focus back on him she praises him for what he has done in her life and will do in her life verse 47 and my spirit has rejoiced in god my savior my spirit rejoices in god my savior you know mary goes through these trials and she comes to a point where her spirit is rejoicing and praising god she is not overflowing with grief or questions but she's overflowing with praise and adoration she acknowledges her lowly state and standing before the holy one and she speaks to god as her savior who needs a savior a sinner needs a savior she acknowledges that she too is a sinner in sin and god is her savior and you know as we see these phrases magnifies rejoices again we may be confused why you know why would she magnify and rejoice she seems a bit off and in the next verse from 48 onwards it says for here comes the why right why is she rejoicing why is she magnifying and you know when we first read this read the song the first time you'll be like, you'll be feeling it's all over the place there is no pattern to it but praise god as we keep studying it god will reveal that there is Uh, a method to the, to this song and the beauty in this song and every time i read it um, you know god kept revealing new things and praise god for that so you see here that 
here we see why right says for he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant for behold henceforth all generations will call me blessed all generations will call me blessed the three things we can look here which is the lowly state maid servant and call me blessed you know in today's world self worth is very important right who you are where you're from which region for you're from which family you are from especially in brother and circles maybe you know which um, what you studied where you're working you know, so many things can define you right um a lot god could have sent the lord jesus incarnate into the world through a queen or through a princess but who did he choose he chose a simple young insignificant village girl from an obscure town obscure town called nazareth and we read further also it says what good can come out of nazareth it was a real small town in the middle of nowhere and yet our lord uses mary from such a lowly state and she acknowledges that she acknowledges that she knows who she are she is she knows and she humbles herself she is humble in her mindset she knows how insignificant she is and she, what does she go on to call call herself we see that in the second phrase which i called out which is a maid servant a bond servant a bond slave some of your versions may say that a slave in service to <coughs> in service to the lord and the last phrase there will say will call me blessed will call me blessed you know in genesis 30 13 leah gives birth to asher and what does she say there i am happy for the daughters will call me blessed you know it's just blessing what mary is also calling out is she is blessed for bringing the messiah the lord jesus christ into the world she acknowledges the honor of raising a king of being chosen to serve as christ's mother she is not saying that she is the blessing to humanity mary is not saying that she will be the one blessing others or that people will be praying to her or that she will be answering prayers but she puts herself in a lowly state and says she has been blessed brothers and sisters have we been blessed are we blessed do we call ourselves the blessed don't we in jeremiah 17:7 it says blessed is the man who trusts in the lord and in whose in whose hope is the lord blessed is the man who trusts the lord john 20:29 one of my favorite verses it says here jesus said to him thomas because you have seen me you have believed because you have seen me you have believed but imagine us blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed how amazing right we are more blessed than the disciples who have seen the lord jesus christ face to face seen his life and yet thus have believed but praise god that we have not even seen him face to face but we have experienced his salvation and what is this blessed hope that we can take we can draw that is in in titus 2:13 it says waiting for our blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great god and lord jesus christ that is our blessed hope you know we are truly the most blessed folks in humanity this is my understanding right god regarded us looked down upon us you know today also we we looked at those phrases and those passages which led us to about us being gentiles far away from god even in romans 5:10 says enemies with god yet god has reconciled us how privileged we are how blessed we are we have faith in a savior that takes away the punishment of our sins amen and what privilege of worshiping this lord it's truly a privilege privilege even this morning coming together with believers and worshiping this lord and i hope we do that every day let's move on to verse 49 49 again says for he who is mighty has done great things for me and is and holy is his name he is mighty has done great things for me holy is his name you know again she here we see um mary quoting various scripture and in psalm 71 verse 19 your righteousness o god is very high 
you have done great things o god who is like you and just a couple of verses below in 70 in 71 22 it says to you i will sing with the harp o holy one of israel o holy one of israel in 111 also it says holy and awesome is his name what mighty things are unfolding in mary's life right the second person of the trinity is being placed by our lord in her womb brothers and sisters do we have a similar faith a child like faith like what mary has she calls it out that god is mighty he is holy do we know how mighty god is do we know how holy he is do we believe and know the great things a god has done for us what has he done for us believers what has he done for us in 1 john 4:10 it says he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins a propitiation for our sins it's a legal requirement an appeasement for the requirement the punishment of our sins in ephesians 1:7 it says in him we have redemption through his blood we have redemption through the blood of our lord jesus christ a heavy price paid for worthless sinners such as us in second corinthians 5:18 it says now these things are from god who reconciled us through himself amazing right we have the propitiation of our sins we have redemption in his blood and we who were so far away from god have now been reconciled unto him there's nothing greater that we can praise god for what a mighty thing he has done for us and he has done that finished work on the cross those who do not understand what i am saying those who are lost those who are still seeking god who are seeking answers who are seeking some form of peace in your life you know each one of us seated here none of us are righteous none of us are holy we are all sinful you may think that oh these guys are quite holy you know they are very good good people you know i can reveal truths to them i cannot reveal things about myself brothers and sisters if you are if you are looking for answers i just want to reassure you there is no one who is righteous here no not one of us for all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god all of us and you know there's a price to be paid for the sins each one of us commit and the wages of that sin is death and that is what it says in romans 6:23 but romans 6:23 does not stop there it continues to say but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord all of us who believe in our lord jesus christ have believed that he died for our sins he took my place on that cross and because of that i have peace there is no price to be paid for me because the price has already been paid on that cross and all i need to do is believe that all i need to do is understand that truth which happened 2000 years back in romans 10 it continues to say if you declare with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved brothers and sisters none of this can be a forced conversion none of this can a, can mean anyone arm twisting you to changing your name nothing will happen of that you have to believe in your heart and that is our only plea today that you will realize this truth and when each of you call on the name of the lord you will be saved as simple as that you will be saved i hope that if any one of you need to know more about this please do come and talk to one of us and we'll be happy to share more about the joy we have in our life and the peace that we have in our life because we understand that god is our savior shall we move on to the next set of verses which is in luke 150 to 53 50 to 53 The first verse says and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Mary is again drawing from scripture Exodus 26 says but God showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my 
commandments those who love me and keep my commandments you know uh, we all know that phrase you know god is love very frivolously used god is love <coughs> in psalms 103 11 it says as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his love he is a great god he loves everyone but it continues to to say towards those who fear him towards those who fear him his love is steadfast to those who fear him you know it's not a fear of uh, you know this god who is you know going to pour wrath on everyone with fire and brimstone and it's going to be um, like mayhem right but it's it's a fear of it's not even it's it's reverence it's glorifying him understanding who he is glorifying him and showing emotions of worship as we would respect our human father are we respecting and considering our heavenly father or are we grieving him that is the question for believers this morning god has mercy on everyone and his and for those who fear him and those who acknowledge that he is our savior god verse 51 51 52 and 53 I'll read it together and we'll see what we can get from this and you'll see in these three verses there's new phrase coming he has about five times sorry four times he has it's a present continuous tense and also for the future to come he has shown strength with his arm he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts i'll just pause you and read psalm 91 for that word a uh, strength with his arm <clears throat> in psalm 98 verse 1 it says oh sing to the lord a new song for he has done marvelous things his right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory salvation you know the israelites have been rescued multiple multiple times by the mighty hand of god and here mary is drawing to that and she it's also a messianic in indication of judgment to come on those who will reject Christ verse 52 and 53 he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly he has filled the hungry with good things and rich he has sent away empty i just rearrange the phrases a bit to kind of help help us understand this better these three verses together and that is the rich and the mighty will be brought down but those who are hungry and lowly will be filled and raised up will be filled and raised up you know the rich and mighty you know it doesn't talk about people who are who are sitting in vidhan sauda with crows and crows after making new roads and digging it up and putting it again it's not about that rich but it's about the rich who are rich in wisdom who think they are rich in wisdom who are rich in self righteousness who are very righteous and who think they are all set and all there you know do you think that they really need the righteousness of christ they don't right because they think they're self sufficient lord jesus in matthew 5 6 he said blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled that is the true hunger can we have that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled in john 6:35 it says lord said, jesus said to them i am the bread of life who comes to me shall not hunger shall not hunger who believes me will not thirst the proud will be scattered and made of nothing the humble will be exalted you know those who are uh, seeking the truth the ones who really need a savior are not the ones who are who are proud because the proud will say i don't need to be rescued i'm good but those who are truly seeking are the ones who are lost and lowly and who really need a savior and it is up to us also to share uh, the good news to them and believers at the cross there was no pride it was complete humility as he humbled himself to death and that to death on the cross a perfect example for us also to follow to be humble and 
that in that phrase in Luke 152 it says and exalted the lowly you know that's a beautiful phrase and exalted the lowly we are exalted we are exalted as believers in Christ we are exalted Ephesians 6 Ephesians 2:6 says God raised us up together and made us sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus I I can't imagine that how do i have this place in the heavenly places with my lord jesus there is nothing i have done to be worthy of this but he has exalted me he has lifted us up and that is our joy this morning you know so who is exalted those who fear and revere and honor and love the lord those who know their lowly estate those who know that they need a savior and those who are hungry for salvation and righteousness and i hope this is our cry this morning as we turn to god and turn away from sin as we turn away from sin and focus on these things where we can focus on our lord focus on his salvation and his righteousness over us finally let's t- turn to the last section and that is in verse 54 to 55 you know up to this point mary is giving a thanksgiving um personal thanksgiving it's uh, quite personal and now she's turning the focus on her nation she's talking about her nation and her people in 54 it says he has helped his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to abraham and to his seed forever you know god is faithful to his covenant this morning also we heard about the covenant and he's ma- very faithful to that covenant he made to abraham ages back that israel would become a nation and israel would be blessed and israel would be a blessing to the nations around them and this would, co- would come through jacob through the tribe of juda through king daniel so king david the royal lineage of king david and that is our lord jesus christ right who is going to be born we will read that we will see that in the weeks to come to be born in the family of david and you know in second samuel 7:16 it says david your house and kingdom will end your forever and you see that in the same verse here seed forever before me god became flesh and dwelt among us and this is the seed who will reign forever our lord jesus christ a fulfillment was already there in that passage it was a signs were already there in genesis 12 3 also it says and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you all people of the earth will be blessed through you and we can we can see a hint of that being coming to us and in acts 10:35 it says every nation who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him and galatians 3:14 says and the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles in christ jesus who might receive the promise of the spirit through faith whoever fears him and through faith we have been grafted into the family of god this morning we read from ephesians 2 and again from romans 5 about being gentiles so far away we were no access to this holy god so much so that we were enemies as gentiles we were enemies to this holy god but thanks be to god that because of our lord jesus christ now we are grafted into the family of god you know the early church was just a small group of believers small group of israelites and jews but praise god the gospel of lord jesus christ has become the belief available to all nations and that was sanctioned by our lord he says you know to make disciples in every tribe and every nation and praise god that my brown skin is accepted and praise god that i am i have an inheritance and that is for everyone who believes no matter who we are i want to just praise god with that so what's our conclusion right luke is really impressed with mary and elizabeth luke is impressed with their faith he's impressed on how they have responded you know 
in uh, I'll just read those two verses one more time, which is in 143. It says, Elizabeth says, why is it granted to me? In her lowly state, she says, why is it granted to me? And Mary says, he looked on the humble estate of his servant. Amazing, right? Beautiful. What should impress us and inspire us from this, this passage? What should Im- impress us, right? That it's only people who can, whose soul can truly magnify the Lord, understanding and acknowledging our lowly state. And are we truly overwhelmed by this great and magnificent God? Or we, do we take it casually? Or do we take it casually? I hope we are overwhelmed by how great he is and how magnificent God is and what he has done for us. And we can truly appreciate that in the days to come. As an application and key learning, I just want to make it very simple and says, you know, we can acknowledge our lowly estate, right? We can acknowledge how low we are. We should have cheerful humility in what God takes us through. Because he does it for a plan and a purpose. And for us, we have to hold on to him and power through. And how can we do that? The next, it says to understand scripture. Mary understood scripture. She held on to it. She quoted it, right? And she also submitted to the authority of the sovereign God. So can we do that when we go through trials and problems? And as his servant, can we be prepared? No matter what situation we are in, are we going to say, you know, brother, not now. I'm going through a difficult phase. So give me two years. I will come back to you. God wants you now. He wants us to be prepared now. He wants us to be involved now. Our excuses are insignificant to him. Because he is and should be our number one priority. Is he the number one priority in our lives? For Mary it was, and you saw that coming out clearly in this song. Are we understanding scripture? Are we submitting to the sovereign God? Are we able to understand that God has placed us in this situation for a plan and a purpose? And in spite of that, I will glorify the Lord. In spite of that, I will magnify the Lord. And as Mary says, use me, O Lord, send me. Use me. You know, we sing the song uh, quite frivolously. Many songs we sing, we sing very frivolously, including me. It says, I am humbled by your mercy and I am broken inside. I am humbled by your mercy and broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. <sighs> pour out my life. God, 50 ml I'll give you today. The rest we'll see later. Pour out my life. My hair is standing here because I know I, I, I don't know if I'm able to. But that's a challenge for each one of us and I hope God will speak to each one of us this week and as we go to our cell groups also, please go to your cell groups and you know discuss this further and you can raise your questions there. You can learn more about this if there's anything I missed out, if there's anything which is needed to be clarified, you can always do it in your cell group. So please go ahead and, and meet up in your cell groups and discuss this further. And I hope, like Mary, we can also pour out our life as a sacrifice to our Lord and Master. Shall we give thanks? <clears throat> Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for how magnificent you are, Lord. Your mighty arm, O oh Lord, is over each one of us. The great things you have done for us, O oh Lord, and the greatest of all is our Lord for sending your Son, O oh Lord, to die on the cross for our sins, for purchasing us, O oh Lord, with his, with his precious blood. We are truly unworthy of this sacrifice. And we thank you and magnify, magnify you for this. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us, O oh Lord, to come into your holy place and you have reconciled us, O Lord, into your beloved, O Lord. And we pray, O Lord, that we will take these things very, very seriously, that we'll understand, Lord, like, like Mary, you want us to pour out our life and give our life as a living sacrifice 
for, for your kingdom, O Lord. And we pray, O Lord, that you'll use us, you'll use each one of us, O Lord, for the extension of your kingdom. And we submit in, unto your will, Lord. And we ask for all of this in and through the name of the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.